Cheers, crusty slut. I want to put my monstera in the background. <laughs> oh my god. Justice. Thank god the lens is pointed this way. Not anymore! <laughs> Set the club on fire. Okay, we need to start. Yep. What's up? I'm so sorry. This, this is a... why we are not starting, is because this is going, <laughs> This is not the kind of talent I signed up to co-host with. I think the appeal of my channel is that there is no talent, no professionalism. If I look any better than a four and a half, people start to get concerned. You're not a four and a half, you're a sweet, sweet six. <laughs> Do I need to take my glasses off? Like, uh, Okay, no, I can't see anything without them. <laughs> <laughs> like a cartoon mole, you're like, mm. why are you lurking? I'm off camera. We know, and yet you keep coming in the room. Sorry. This is fully just water. Like, we're deranged. We're deranged. We can't even be like, this could be vodka. Like, it just, it's just water. Here, smell it. It's not even peppermint tea. <laughs> What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Oh my god, you like... literally no, I didn't. almost. No, I didn't. I have special awareness in my elbows, okay? It's fine. Mm -hmm. Toot in battle. What a day for adventure. Okay. Day for adventure. <laughs> Poked the bear. This is our best video. <clears throat> <laughs> Sometimes a reading sucks, okay? Oh my god. The best time to wear a striped sweater. I'm gonna is tickle you all right in the, the obliques. Time. I'm gonna tickle you right in the motherfucking obliques. One with the color. I'm gonna do it. Turtleneck. You have five seconds. The time. Cause when you. We're going. Hi, and welcome back to bitch. Are you? I was literally, I was on it that time. I have it in my heart and soul. We've done this so many a times. <laughs> it never gets easier. No, it never does. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Fruit that looks like butts. Oh it's a folder. It's a valid folder. Grow up. Okay, this studio light. Oh my god, I'm just trying to make a picture for mom. Are you, oh, I thought you were gonna lick me. Okay, nice one. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna prom pose you. Or prom what? picture you. <laughs> Hello, my lady. <laughs> That's cute. That, I look like I'm killing you. <laughs> I'm gonna straddle you like we're in a birthing class. <laughs> I'm coming Come out the little one moss. It's coming out. I see the head. <laughs> Like a record scratch. Hey, you're probably wondering. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna need you to close those legs. Not <laughs> none of this is usable, and somehow all of it is. This is me. Hi, welcome back. I'm Kat. That's her. No, nope, her. <laughs> this kid is back over here. She's back. One more time. Hello, internet. Did you miss me? What? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> One, two, three. This is me. One, two. One, two. Three. Hello, welcome back. I'm Kat. She's Lauren. Larry's in the back. Hello. <laughs> How do you feel like this is going based on what you've heard and not seen? <laughs> Please don't <laughs> Oh my god. It's been a struggle. I'm Kat. That's her. <laughs> I heard that one. Have we gotten a workable high? I don't know. The intro? No. <laughs> okay, everyone, shout out three, two, one. Hi, welcome back. My name is Kat. This is Lauren, my sister. We share blood and also hair follicles. Is that the DNA? Can't be true. DNA is different from hair follicles. <laughs> I should hope we don't share follicles. No offense, but this one's not starting up any stronger. <laughs> I think I should go. How to make lunch or something innocent with Ellie? <laughs> Silence. I'm going full business mode. I'm channeling a Larry business voice type, but through my own vocal Larry business voice. Shorts. Shorts. Three, two, one. Silence. Three, two. No, what? Jules just about to use her business voice. What? 
It's like a dog whistle. <laughs> You know exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> I don't even know what you're trying to say. <laughs> Immaculate consumption. <laughs> no! Why are you like this? <laughs> Hi, welcome back. My name is Kat. This is my YouTube channel. Welcome to this place. This is my sister, Lauren. This is sweaty spring reads. You know how this works. We have done this before. If I do not talk like Siri, I will start to laugh. Um, because it. of the fact that it is 9.58 p.m. and we are us, um, we have not planned this video and it is not structured nor going to be good. You have sent in requests. We have not looked at the requests. We also have not pre-chosen requests. We are going to scroll and find requests, and if yours is chosen, fucking congratulations, you're winning. And if not, we'll hit you next time. Why are we? Okay. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Girl, I got so much mucus inside me right now. <laughs> Tell me to stop. Stop. A book that I can read under the shade of a willow tree next to a pond. Okay, a willow tree? That's next a very... to a pond. Oh, a pond too? A willow tree next to a pond. Okay, okay. I'm looking through my Goodreads reading challenge like I've read more than 17 books. I just opened up my want to read tab so it's okay. <laughs> In my vision, your willow tree and your pond is not beautiful, crisp, and aesthetic. Your, your tree is dead and your pond is either filled with like sewage or a body or like you're in hell. Okay, I'm gonna tell you to read Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. <laughs> she is aesthetic but decaying. Gripping, but atmospheric. She is excellence. That is my answer. Do you have one? I'm gonna recommend to you Rules for Visiting by Jessica Francis Kane. It's a really cute book about female friendships into adulthood, but not in the like early 20s, everyone's friends and like trying to figure it out kind of way. Like this is like a more mature take on female friendship where like you've drifted apart and you're kind of coming back together. And the main character is a gardener and a recluse and she has to like yeah, a yeah. recluse, a recluse and a gardener, and oh, she has and she to like. These? Oh my god, I know. <laughs> she like has to go out and resolves for some reason to reconnect with some of her really close friends from her past, and it's like this very touching story. There are trees involved, and okay. it was like a nice like okay. breezy read that okay. I could see enjoying by a pond. Okay. I did. Okay. It. Yeah. Yeah. Rock on. Yeah. That's a book. My turn. Next. We're scrolling. A book you love for the same reasons that everyone else hates it. The Pisces. Oh, that's a good one. That I can't stop thinking about. That is she true. lives rent free. free. Larry, cover your ears. Okay. Like really fucking hot mermaid sex. Hey, you true. took your ears off. I heard about the mermaid sex. No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, so anyway, a human lady fucks a merman, but that's not like really why I liked it. I think people get caught up on that. They're like, that's weird. And I'm like, yeah, it is weird. But you know, sometimes you gotta like muddle through some funky shit to get to the, 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 you gotta like nose through the mermaid sex to get to the existential crisis to get yeah. to the what is love and that convo. crisis do be profound. It was so hot. My choice is the lightness by Emily Temple. Yeah, oh. which I know. I'm sorry. I love the vibe. Okay. And if you want a book that is pure atmosphere, plot makes no sense, characters are they were fine. They were fine. Like they're they're. Teenage girls at a meditation center trying to transcend the physical realm? Like, what more could you possibly expect out of them other than what they did? It did what I needed it to do. I quite liked it. Okay. The sentences were pretty. Uh -huh. I'm a sucker for pretty sentences and uh -huh. an aesthetically pleasing cover. Yeah. Next prompt. Okay. A book that makes you cry so much that at the end of it you get a sense of satisfaction and relief. Currently I'm reading Shaggy Bane. I have already cried a little bit. It takes a lot to make me cry. Um, and it should not surprise you that this in particular has already made me cry given my complete and utter infatuation with a little life. Yeah, so it's made me cry and just based on the trajectory that we are following, I think we've kind of reached the peak happiness of the book and it's about to fall steeply, steeply downhill. So I'm assuming that there are more tears coming my way and I am hoping to God that I feel satisfied and content and heartbroken in the right way when I finish it instead of in the wrong way. Um, uh, okay. 
Dr. A. G. Brown by Talia Hibbert. I think it made me tear up like a little bit. Just out of sheer happiness though, which I guess makes it satisfying. A book about very complicated human relations because we love to read some drama. <laughs> Baby. Luster. Oh, that's a, yeah. Luster. That'll do Instant it. pick. Great book, great prose, great characters, so much drama, so much confusion. You've got the extramarital relationship, you've got the... Internal conflict. Internal conflict, you've got the... Unexpected, um... Female friendship, female yeah. support, bonding, yeah. levels, career questions, adding like to... Just oh, general, I just like, my back in 20s seven messiness. places, that was beautiful. Okay. Uh, yeah, 20s, <laughs> 20s messiness, so good. So many, so much, so much complicated stuff, and like, yep, that's the one. That's the winner. <laughs> I'm just gonna hop on that recommendation. And we're gonna move Perfect. on. Perfect. Cool. Brand. A book that makes me feel like I'm driving back with my selective friend group after we murdered a dear friend in the woods and I know our lives are headed to chaos from here, preferably not the secret history or if we were villains. Okay. Okay, well, don't read the secret history. Read the secret history, though. I'm gonna go for another book that was just, like, straight vibes. The True Aunts by Kate Weinberg. Um, this was one that I think was on one of those lists that's like, these books are like the secret history, so maybe read if you like Dark Academia, blah, blah. I did not love the ending, but... The vibe going through and the just kind of foreboding sense of doom was very strong throughout and it was a fun one. It was a deep cut. In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt. Straight vibes and also has woods and also has murder and actually kind of some friendships. I don't know if I would say friend group, but like... You meet some folks, you befriend them, you love them, you're afraid of them. It's a good time. It's a, it's a blast and a half. I said in my Goodreads review it was A24's The Witch mixed with Grimm's Fairy Tales, so if that's a thing that you're into, then meh, go for it. Sounds like it works. You know when you wake up in a panic super early by accident thinking that you're late to go somewhere, but then you realize it's Sunday so you have nowhere to be, so you're just like, wait, what the fuck, and then immediately fall back asleep, only then to wake up properly two hours later and be like, wait, did I wake up before? I don't even know anymore. Yeah, a book that feels like that. So the way that I'm gonna interpret that prompt is a book that like literally the second that you open it, you like step so fully into it that you like, when you come back up for air, you're like, where in the fuck am I? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm into that. Ooh! Okay, mine is To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. This is 60 something pages. It's a sh really short novella. It is horror. It is pretty graphic and gruesome and has a lot of sensitive topics involved. So like, Definitely make sure you do your research before you engage with the text, but um, it's about a woman who is super obsessed with vultures and wants to be one with the vultures, i.e. eating dead meat. Ew. It was a moment. Oh my god. It was the moment. Where do you find these books? I don't know, okay. but God, did I give this five stars. Enjoy it. It's a, it's a good ass time. So my rec is a little bit less graphic. Um, my book is The Other Americans by Leila Lamy. I read this in one sitting, sitting on our parents' couch. It is not a thriller, but it has a vague, like, suspicious tension building sort of situation that kind of keeps the plot moving forward. Really, really well-developed characters. Once you go down, you will not come back up for air until you're done. How are you doing? I think we're doing okay, given the rough start that we had. Boop. <laughs> I spoke too soon. <laughs> A book you read for class and didn't expect to like, but ended up loving. Ooh, okay. That's Let me find great. one. Okay, so criteria here though is that you didn't think you were gonna like it because I've read some books like for my YA lit class. I was like psyched for. Given that it is National Poetry Month, I'm gonna wreck some poetry collections. The first one is Crash by Richard Sykin, which I talk about constantly um, and think about constantly. This was part of my honors thesis, and I didn't really have any expectations or like know what it was going to be about. Basically, my advisor just gave me a list of books and was like, here's your reading list based on the work that you've like already produced and we're gonna like go further and deeper. And this was one of the books that he gave me. Incredible, broke my brain, the poems themselves, the themes in the poems, just like utterly heartbreaking, utterly beautiful. It's like top three collection for me for sure. And I just had no 
sense of what it was before I started reading it. So that one's great. Oh, Apocalyptic Swing by Gabrielle Calvacaresi, also amazing, really propulsive, really physical poems. Those were not part of my thesis, but for the class that I took the semester before, and again, I just like didn't have an expectation, and they absolutely blew me away. The last one is Mule by Shane McRae, which I am holding here. There are these very specific sequences in here that are broken sonnets, essentially, that just showed me really cool things that can be done with this kind of form. And again, like, no expectation. Your battery thing is blinking. So anyway, those are mine. Poetry. Read read more poems. Yeah. Mine is something I read last semester, uh, Crick Crack by Edwidge Dantico. Ooh! It's short stories. I will always remember it as a favorite of something that I read for school because the first story, which I think is called, like, Children of the Sea or something, it's, like, 25 pages long and I remember it so vividly because it fucked me up. It's, I, I literally, like, I almost cried. I was, I was, I was, uh, a whisper away from full-on breaking down. Wow. It's so good. A book for when you're not a fan of the beach, but you always somehow are brought there by beach lovers and you need something that captures the mixed vibe of loving your friends but wishing you were somewhere else. Want to read about cults? I'd recommend Beach Read by Emily Henry. Boy oh boy, is it a beach read, but it's also very much not. Like, it is, but it isn't. Um, okay, so anyway, you get those cute beachy vibes, you look on the outside like you're reading a cute beachy read, but on the inside you're actually reading about family dysfunction, general trauma, and death cults. Yeah. So, also romance. It's cute. I think it's cute. Like, by my standards, that shit is saccharine. Is that how you say that? Mm hmm Oh, what up? Your brain. Soft and the moist sky. and wet. The elephants. Huh? I will co-sign that rec, and I will also throw Expectation by Anna Hope your way. Yeah, like, loving your friends but wishing you were somewhere else is kind of, like, the whole way that this book is set up. It's also, like, light enough to be a beach read, so I think it, I think it works on, like, both of those levels. Boom. Next. Next. We're doing okay. Are you okay? Stop! A book that broke you, but in a good way. Like a giant sneeze you feel in the deep brain. Oh, I have like... You know, you, I'm you are the queen that. of the giant sneeze. I have such catastrophic sneezes. Maybe I'm just going with this because the main character is a neuroscience PhD, and that has to do with brain sneezes. I mean, it has to do with brains, and maybe sneezes? But just like the brain in general, like I've got I've got brains on the brain. Um, Transcendent Kingdom broke me in such a good way. This was another one that dealt with grief and family and tradition and all of the tension between all of those things, among all of those things. It was a very interesting look at all of that because of the main character's like scientific background, like the way that that kind of filtered through everything was really fascinating for me. I'm really underselling this book, but it was great and just kind of you know took a pipe cleaner to the old brain parts, and it was good. I'm gonna say one of my favorite millennial fiction Ooh. novels, which is The New Me by Halle Butler. Um, this book bullied me, but like I'm okay with it, you know? I wasn't expecting to like it that much, and then out of the blue I was just like slapped in the face by the truth, and I felt it, and it felt like I sneezed, and it was in the deep brain, and I will forever remember it, and Halle Butler for just being ruthless. Yeah. yeah. Demolishing me and my sense of self. So thanks. Are you gonna tell me to stop anytime soon or like Oh my god, stop <laughs> thanks, okay? <laughs> stop. A book that leads you to believe you know exactly what's going on when in fact it turns out you had no idea what was going oh. on. That's <laughs> some daily life type shit. Yeah. I'm gonna say Wow No Thank You by Samantha Irby. Ooh. Boy do I fucking love Samantha Irby. I would literally lay down my life for Samantha Irby. I, I'm gonna put that out on the internet. Not in like a weird way, just in like a hey Samantha Irby, I think you're really cool kind of way. Now, I should probably talk about the book and less about Samantha Irby. I mean she is really cool. She's so cool. Like she's just so down to earth and chill and funny and I'm like I would freeze up if I was in your immediate vicinity but boy do I want to be there. Okay, so Wow No Thank You is her third book. I have read that one and also her second one but not her first one and that's all of them. So um, anyway, but of the two that I have read, it's my favorite. She writes personal essays about just like the most mundane shit, sprinkled in with some like really exceptional things, like when she went to uh, go write on the show Shrill on for Hulu. But like she also just talks about her everyday life and her daily routines and her most like personal, normal thoughts. And you're like, wow, I think those too. And instead of no thank you, I said thank you. Um, what was the prompt? She says these things, 
and they're truths, even if maybe we don't always acknowledge them as truths, and so it makes you feel like you know what's going on because you and her are on the same wavelength, and then you go outside and everyone else is on... What? <laughs> I just got lost in my own sentence. You are going full Michael Scott. Like, sometimes I start a sentence and I don't know where it's going and I just hope I find it somewhere along the way. Like, that's you right now. Yeah. It, 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 it's the truth, but it's truths that no one knows are truths until you read them and then you're like, that's the damn truth. Um, ooh, I'm gonna sit up Oh, first. wow, welcome. Thank you. Oh, it's Yours turn. turn. Yours turn. Yours turn? Yours turn. <laughs> a book for when you all- Fuck. <laughs> Again? <laughs> A book for when all you want to read is an Alice Oseman book, but you've already read all of her books. <gasps> oh, 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 okay! Number one, reread, bitch. I don't know if you're cool with being called bitch, but like, reread. Expletive here. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> Hot take, maybe. Okay. Normal people. No, I get that. I haven't even read it, but I get that. I mean, I've seen it, but I haven't read it, but I get that. Normal people. Get it. I don't know. I, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. It just makes sense in my brain. What you got, homie? Okay. Are you gonna recommend Fifty Shades Freed? Yeah, definitely. I have a few. Okay, when my brain hears Alice Oseman, we obviously immediately go to Radio Silence because you've been she here before. is me you know and I am happening. her and you know me. So if you're looking for a young adult contemporary with that, like, I'm ending high school and what the hell's going on kind of vibe with different degrees of that element but like that element nonetheless and also like a dysfunctional family type of situation slash friendship slash like slash you know uh and you want strictly reality then i'm gonna say what the fuck is it called oh catherine um. <laughs> How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. I think I've already made this comparison. I think I've already said that if anyone's asking for something like Alice Oseman that's not Alice Oseman, like well, this is what I'm recommending. It's your channel. It's your rules. Do it again. That's fucking right. Here we are again. If you are cool with having like a smidge bit of magic, then I'm going to say Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. If you're cool with a graphic novel and some younger characters, but like... <laughs> aren't you... <laughs> We just cleaned this apartment! If you're, room. <laughs> okay, if you're cool with some younger characters and a little bit of magic and a graphic novel format and- which I'm assuming you are because Heartstopper duh. But you're looking for that like just joy and like casual exploration of identity and self, then I'm gonna say to read Snapdragon. Oh, and then, continuing, <laughs> last one. I actually haven't read this book yet, but I, just from reading the synopsis, have very strong vibes that it is basically going to be radio silence for adults, and it's called Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere by Alice First, so I can't put my stamp of approval on it yet, but if you're in your 20s, and you're desperately chasing the feeling of comfort that you first felt when you read Radio Silence for the first time ever. That's all you want and that's the reason that you're still reading books or something maybe, I don't know. Maybe try that out. <laughs> it might do you some good. Maybe it'll suck, I don't know. But you know what? Just give it a shot! <laughs> What more needs to be said? She don't have an outro. Is this the end? No, I don't know. I would, I just that Wait, just, I like, forgot. felt like a moment. Oh, okay. Um. Oh fuck, we have one more. One more. Okay. My battery is dying. A book that could have been written by Nick Miller. What's a book that has a crossword in it with no answers? Um. Nick Miller. Nick Miller. Never, never does, does anything. anything. Honestly, come on. Why is this the answer? I mean, it is. Yeah, that'll do it. Geese. <laughs> A book like, that is geese? Why is it? <laughs> it's a book that is geese. It's a book that is a geese. I don't know. I don't know how, but it is. Like, why is it the book that I recommend for everything? Because it it just is applicable. It just works. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna recommend Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson because it's the book that I recommend for everyone and everything. And I, like, honestly, I do think that Nick Miller's brain could have birthed um, elder millennial babysits children, and they spontaneously combust. Like, I think Nick Miller could have done that. In the same vein of New Girl, it's like a really cute story about found family and like kind of being lost in life and then finding a path even if it's unconventional and passing the bar but then deciding to become a bartender because you don't want to be a lawyer um bar bar that literally just clicked in my brain also <laughs> um bar 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 bars geese <laughs>
Geese? 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 <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. Wow, me so earning it. <laughs>